Hey everybody, WireDogSec back with another video for you guys. This is this one's going to cover an article by Bleeping Computer. Before we get into it, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit the comment section with your thoughts and opinions on the video and the article. And of course, as always, I'll have the link to the article in the description section. Hopefully you guys are having a good day, and let's get down to it. FBI, hackers steal millions from healthcare payment processors. As we know, healthcare sector tends to be a prime target for cyber criminals because a lot of healthcare organizations aren't doing the basics. They're not implementing best practices when it comes to cybersecurity. In turn, they end up getting breached, getting hit with ransomware or some kind of phishing attack or some other form of malicious attack. And of course, that makes them a soft target because they're not doing the right things, they're not doing their due diligence, not doing their due care, they're not doing what it takes when it comes to properly securing their systems. No, not all of healthcare organizations are like that, but many of them are like that. As you can see from the news headlines, just go and do a Google search on healthcare cyber attacks, healthcare ransomware attacks, and you'll come to find out that a lot of those data breaches have a critical impact especially when it comes to patients and such. But let's get down to this article. The FBI has issued an alert about hackers targeting healthcare payment processors to route payments to bank accounts controlled by the attacker. This, this year alone, third actors have stolen more than 4.6 million from healthcare companies after gaining access to computer accounts and changing payment details. Wow. Okay, so this is kind of a uh, usual SOP for attackers getting your systems, or maybe they did some kind of vishing call and managed to trick somebody into changing account details. But let's see what actually happened. Tricking victims, cyber criminals are combining multiple tactics to obtain login credentials of employees at payment processors in the healthcare industry and to modify payment instructions. The FBI says that it received multiple reports where hackers are using publicly available personal details and social engineering to impersonate victims with account or well with access to health healthcare portals, websites, and payment information. Okay, right, combination of attacks. I mean, if they're using publicly available personal details, they, they could have gotten that information from, you know, maybe just heck on Google itself or just from all these data breaches that have happened throughout the world. I mean, just get on the dark web and get on there and buy all kinds of personal details about people you know, their, you know, first, last name, socials, payment card information, all types of sensitive information is available on the dark web from all these data breaches that happen. And apparently they combine that information that they found with social engineering, which could have been some kind of vishing attack, i.e. Um, voice phishing, as in they, they're calling these organizations pretending to be somebody and then ended up getting the employee to change those account details for those account, or for those payment accounts. Phishing and spoofing support centers are additional methods to help hackers achieve their goal of gaining access to entities that process and distribute healthcare payments. FBI's alert today notes that this specific threat actor activity includes sending phishing emails to financial departments of healthcare payment processors. They are also modifying exchange servers, configuration, setting up custom rules for targeted accounts likely to receive a copy of the victim. Now that right there is that's the standard SOP, man. Right there, as soon as they get an account compromised, email account, they'll go in and they'll set up all kinds of um, email rules inside of Outlook or what or whatever email system they're in. That way, um, if the account somehow loses, uh, or if the if the attacker somehow loses control of that account, those real those rules in there will still be sending out those emails to an attacker controlled um, email server, what have you. I mean, phishing and spoofing support centers. Of course, phishing is like one of the top ways that threat actors manage to compromise organizations. Spoofing support centers. I've seen a lot, a lot of those callback emails coming in, like bizarre call emails. They'll pretend to be like Geek Squad or they'll pretend to be like Norton or some other entity out there. And they'll have, a lot of times they'll just have the information inside of the email itself, or it will have the information inside of a like image, 
like a PNG image or something like that. You click on the image and it's got the information that, hey, you know, this is Geek Squad. You know, this is your uh, purchase order or some crap. And I'll tell you to call this number here to get support about this, this purchase order or whatever. But in fact, the number that you call is controlled by the scammers or the cyber criminals, some kind of call center they have set up overseas somewhere. The next thing you know, call that number and they trick you into installing some kind of malicious software on your machine and you got a cyber incident on your hands. So make sure you're training your users on how to properly deal with those phishing emails and such, how to properly deal with the phishing um, attacks, social engineering, engineering in general. Let's see here. Billions of dollars stolen. FBI says that in just three such incidents in February and April this year, hackers diverted to their accounts more than 4.6 million from the victims. Wow. In February, one third actor used credentials, credentials from a major healthcare company to replace the direct deposit banking information of a hospital with accounts they controlled, stealing 3.1 million. Now, when it comes to something like that, make sure that your financial folks are following proper procedures and make sure they actually have a proper process and proper procedures in place to try to mitigate or detect this kind of behavior. A lot of times um, when someone tries to change the account information, they have to get like a supervisor approval or manager approval in order to change those account details or the system will flag it or, and send an email to everybody. So you'll have that check and balance there. So you're not just nearly willy going in there and just changing account information. The next thing you know, um, accounts are getting drained or payments are getting diverted to some unknown attacker controlled account. In a separate incident, this, the same month, cyber criminals used the same method to steal about 700,000 from another victim. Another attack happened in April when a healthcare company with more than 175 medical providers lost 840,000. Split threat actor that impersonated an employee and changed the automated clearinghouse ACH instructions, right? As I just stated before, make sure those um, procedures and such are in place. So this type of activity can, activity can be mitigated or at least detected by someone else. So you're not, you don't have just one person running the show and changing these account details and getting that money stolen. This type of incident is neither singular nor new. The Federal Agency says that between June 2018 and June or January 2019, hackers targeted and accessed at least 65 healthcare payment processes throughout the United States. Right. Okay. Mitigation recommendations. The FBI has compiled a short list of indicators of compromise that could help health organizations stop or spot cyber criminal attempts to gain access to user accounts, organizations should deem suspicious any, suspicious any changes to the email server and have not been planned or happen without a legitimate reason, right? Which is why you have change control and other types of controls in place to detect this kind of behavior whenever it occurs. Uh, see here, you can read the rest right there. We're just looking at a little of the recommendations they have listed out here. Training for employees to identify, right? That is security awareness training. What a surprise, cybersecurity best practice. Engineering and spoofing attempts, that goes along with training, cybersecurity, um, education and training, authentication or barrier layers to decrease or eliminate the viability of phishing, right? That would include, you know, we got multi-factor authentication on all accounts that need it, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure you have strong passwords out there. Mitigate vulnerabilities related to third-party vendors. Of course, Vulner proper vulnerability management, proper patch management process in place. Make sure you're getting those known vulnerabilities remediated in a timely manner. A lot of times you'll see all these, these zero days hitting the news headlines, but the company will tend to focus on these new zero days that come out and tend to forget about the thousands upon thousands of vulnerabilities that are already existing in their environment. Well, what about those? <laughs> are you gonna get those fixed? Like, come on, company policies should include verification of any changes to existing invoices, bank deposits, and contact information for interactions with third-party vendors and organizational collaboration, collaborations. As I stated before, make sure you got those proper checks and balances in place, those proper procedures, proper process going to place. Make sure if something gets changed, it goes to the right people that can authorize that change. Setting up protocols for employees to report suspicious activity, changes email server configuration, Denied the password policy, recovery attempts, password resets, changing 2FA phone numbers. Hopefully you're not using um, text or call MFA or 2FA because it is garbage. You should be using something more secure that is more phishing resistant MFA, I should say. 
immediate reset passwords for accounts identified during a system network compromise. Of course, that's standard operating procedures and incident response. Minimize exposure through timely patching systems and updating security solutions. As I stated before, proper proper patch management in place, proper vulnerability management in place. See, a lot of this stuff here goes back to cybersecurity best practices and organizations, a lot of organizations out there will tend to neglect the cybersecurity best practices. Next thing you know, they're getting punched in the face and they have a cyber incident or a data breach on their hands. And next thing you know, they're in the news headlines, they lost all this money, all these patients were affected, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, if you got any type of information from this video, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the comment section on your thoughts and opinions on article. Thank you. Have a good day.